And the next talk is by Srikant Shastri, nucleation in supercooled liquid silicon. Okay, we're coming to the end of a long day, so um, I'm going to try and uh, make this a quick and easy to understand uh, talk. Uh, so the uh, work that I'll, I'll present you some preliminary results of is looking at uh, crystal nucleation in supercooled silicon. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll spend a good uh, certain amount of time in telling you why this problem is interesting and, and, and uh, uh, the context in which we got into the problem. And, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what preliminary results we have in looking at crystal nucleation. Uh, I'm going to skip very quickly some uh, introductory slides, basically saying that you know we're interested in looking at phase behavior in, 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 uh, as a way of understanding properties of materials. And phase behavior, of course, can be rather uh, complex in, in substances like water. But <clears throat> this complexity or richness, depending on uh, how you want to look at it, uh, gets even uh, uh, richer if one also worries about metastable states and, and uh, phenomena that take place in metastable states. And this is the context of, of, of the work that I'm going to be talking about because the, one of the phenomena that we have been interested in uh, that, are, that occurs under metastable conditions is a, a, a novel liquid-liquid transition between two forms of, of, of uh, uh, a liquid which has been explored a lot as a way of <coughs> explaining the anomalous properties of water. And, and it has also been proposed and studied for a variety of analog systems uh, to water, such as silica, carbon, phosphorus, etc. The particular system that we have been interested in here, which is uh, uh, an analog system of water, uh, is silicon. And, and uh, <clears throat> I'll say more about that in a moment. But just to give you an idea of what uh, is the connection to anomalous properties of water, here is a brief sketch of, of different anomalous uh, uh, thermodynamic properties of water. The famous one is the density maximum that occurs at 4 degrees at atmospheric pressure. Um, there's <clears throat> but one uh, less known anomaly is that the compressibility of water, unlike uh, ordinary liquids, uh, goes through a minimum and rises as one goes to low temperatures. And, and also, a similar behavior is, is shown uh, by the heat capacity. And uh, one of the questions that people have been interested in is, is, is the one that's at the bottom here, whether we can understand uh, this kind of behavior uh, in terms of features of the phase diagram. And, and the answer takes us into supercooled or metastable uh, uh, to the metastable liquid regime because uh, uh, the phase behavior, if we are only looking at, at, at equilibrium phases, uh, is, is well known and does not contain an explicit answer to the question of how we might understand these things as aspects of the phase behavior of water. Um, <clears throat> so um, a number of different possibilities uh, have been, have been uh, uh, proposed as a way of understanding uh, the, the anomalous behavior of water and, and similar uh, liquids displaying uh, uh, anomalous thermodynamics. And, and I won't go through all of them because this is sort of a slide taken from another talk which focuses on these aspects. But, but one of the three scenarios that, that I have listed here is, is one which invokes the presence of uh, a, a second critical point between uh, two forms of the liquid in addition to the well-known liquid gas, a critical end point, okay? Um, and and uh, again, uh, not, I don't want to go into the details of, of all of this. There is a, a lot of experimental evidence that, that is consistent with this possibility, um, but it's not very conclusively uh, proved or accepted so far in, in any, any of the systems uh, as a matter of fact, but there have been a number of theoretical and, and, and computational studies which do show that for models of water and models of silicon and so on, there is uh, such a liquid-liquid transition. And, and the case of silicon, uh, the evidence has come from work in, in our group. Okay, uh, so basically uh, <coughs> the history of, of, of this possible uh, 
liquid-liquid uh, transition is long. In the case of silicon, uh, there's a lot of pioneering uh, experimental work that was done by Turnbull and, and Swappen and, and co-workers. And <clears throat> based on the experimental results uh, concerning uh, laser-heated amorphous solid silicon, uh, these people proposed that there was a first-order transition between amorphous silicon uh, and, and, and a liquid, and the liquid silicon. Uh, what our work has, and, and sorry, um, <coughs> this uh, was also uh, the basis for a, a simple-minded uh, theoretical model by uh, uh, this, uh, by Aptecker uh, quite some time ago, uh, which shows that indeed there is uh, well, which has this phase diagram where there is a critical endpoint, and more relevant to the, to the present talk, this critical endpoint uh, from from the model calculation by Aptecker lies at negative pressures, and uh, there is, as I mentioned, there has been a lot of computer simulation evidence uh, using the potential that we, I'm going to describe, use, uh, called the Stillinger-Weber potential. Uh, there's some recent experimental evidence as well, which I won't go into. But from our work uh, involving rather extensive molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo uh, simulations is summarized in this phase diagram. Uh, so here, uh, these, these lines are the normal liquid gas, liquid solid, and, and solid gas uh, coexistence lines. And uh, the behavior that we are interested in happens in the supercooled liquid a supercooled and stretched liquid because this is zero pressure. Uh, so what we have is a negative uh, pressure critical endpoint to which, which separates two forms of the liquid, which are, I'll, I'll say a little bit about how the two are characterized. And uh, <clears throat> in uh, uh, this, this in, uh, at negative pressures, one has a line that further demarcates but without a discontinuity of any kind, uh, what is called a high-density liquid and a low-density liquid. And the low-density liquid that's down here uh, is characterized by structure that is very similar to that of uh, crystalline silicon, which is relevant for my, my uh, later purposes. And the, the line that I'm talking about here is a line of compressibility maxima, which is also relevant for what I'm going to talk about later on. And uh, for, for reasons that I'll describe in a moment, we will be interested in looking at crystal nucleation in this region of the phase diagram, which is above the critical uh, temperature uh, at, at pressures that straddle this compressibility maximum line and uh, uh, covering a range of pressures where the structure of the liquid goes from being something that's somewhat different from, from the crystal phase to something that's very close to the crystal phase. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll keep this for, the, for, for later discussion because negative pressure uh, is something that you can have. I'll give you a quick, quick answer, but for the discussion later. Uh, it's something that can arise in metastable states, not in equilibrium states. And, and this... Uh, needs wall interactions, it's, but it's okay. Uh, it exists in nature. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about that more later on. Okay, so um, um, maybe I, I, I skip, skip this, but basically the potential that we use for our simulations is, is a classical potential which is made up of two and three body interactions, uh, and this is... Uh, uh, the, the, the model is defined in this manner because silicon uh, has directional interactions and has a tetrahedral local geometry uh, for the energetically favorable structures. And um, I think in the interest of time, I will, I will not say too much about the details of the two phases except to, to, to say that when one goes at zero pressure from... Um, uh, high temperatures to low temperatures, one has the evolution of the, the structure of the liquid going from uh, something that's a mixture of four coordinated and higher coordinated atoms 
to something that's almost purely four coordinated in the low density liquid uh, below the transition. And uh, the same kind of trend is observed when one goes from high pressures to low pressures. And this is uh, shown uh, here. What, what is plotted here is the coordination number of the particles as a function of the pressure for a variety of, of temperatures. And this is high temperature. This is low temperature. What you see as pressure is decreased is that the coordination number moves towards tetrahedral coordination number, which is 4. Uh, it happens continuously at high temperatures, discontinuously continuously at low temperatures, because at, at around uh, 1140, uh, or sorry, 1120 uh, uh, Kelvin, one has uh, one goes from having continuous behavior at high temperatures to discontinuous behavior at low temperatures. There's a critical endpoint there. I'll, I'll, I already showed you the data. Um, Corresponding to the approach to the critical endpoint, if one looks along an isotherm at the compressibility, the compressibility uh, begins to display a maximum which grows at, as temperature is decreased. Okay? Um, now, um, um, yeah, so uh, <coughs> now the reason we, we bothered. We started to think about uh, crystal nucleation is uh, sort of summarized here. Uh, ha having uh, established that there was a first order liquid-liquid transition at zero pressure, we wanted to ask the next obvious question, which was where is the critical endpoint, whether it's there or not. And this took us to uh, negative pressures. And a practical problem that was encountered was that simulations were extremely hard to do in this regime because of two factors. One is the, mm, I didn't show it earlier, but I'll, I will in a minute. One is that uh, the mobilities of particles become extremely uh, uh, low at negative pressures. And uh, this you can think of and understand in terms of the local coordination. If one imagines that one has an almost perfectly tetrahedral uh, network of, of interacting particles. These are all sitting pretty. All the particles are happy. The configuration is energetically stable. So particle mobilities are low. Okay? So this is one factor that makes it difficult. But a second factor which sort of works in the opposite direction is that crystal nucleation becomes very, very rapid. Okay? When I say rapid, uh, it, it, uh, what I mean is that this happens on nanosecond time scales. Okay? And, uh, now, critical fluctuations, as well as a change in the local structure, have been looked at in the past by Frankel and co-workers as, uh, as, as, as properties that contribute to crystal nucleation rates. And uh, uh, something that's novel in our case is that the critical fluctuations come from not uh, a liquid gas type of uh, critical behavior. Let me quickly go back to an earlier slide that I showed, um, which I didn't talk about. Uh, this is a schematic of, of the colloidal, uh, of the phase diagram of colloidal suspensions, which, which uh, uh, Frankel and Tenwalde looked at. Basically, when, when one has colloidal particles with very na uh, narrow uh, interaction range, uh, the liquid gas <coughs> uh, uh, coexistence gets submerged below the fluid solid uh, uh, coexistence uh, region. And therefore, when one approaches the critical endpoint for this liquid gas uh, uh, phase transition, one is in the metastable region with respect to the solid or with respect to solid uh, fluid phase separation. And this is a re regime where one uh, observes crystal nucleation. And this crystal nucleation uh, has been shown uh, to be uh, the rate of which has been shown to be enhanced due to the presence of density fluctuations upon uh, approaching this critical point. We have a scenario that is somewhat similar, except that the critical point in question is um, 
<coughs> a liquid liquid critical point okay so here uh, quickly to show uh, 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 an illustration uh, this is a simulation that as I said uh, crystallizes uh, on rather short time scales and and we uh, in fact have performed much to our annoyance many many such simulations where the system crystallizes too easily um, let me skip the remaining uh, slides concerning the the critical end point but basically um, <coughs> okay um, uh, this is how we got to the problem of looking at uh, nucleation we said look you know there's there's all the, there's work that suggests that density fluctuations near a critical point are important and 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 work and uh, that's so summarized here uh, and and I'll, I'll I'll say that in a uh, so let me maybe go through it basically um, <clears throat> the the idea is that depending on uh, which way you're quenching your liquid um, and and where uh, the the path in in this order parameter space that your system takes in crystallizing is different uh, when you quench near the the uh, the, the, the 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 metastable critical point uh, the idea is that uh, first, the, the density of, of your uh, nucleus increases, uh, and, and the order, the crystalline order, only develops much later. Uh, so, so, this is a picture where, uh, to a first approximation, uh, what is happening is that you're forming something like a, a droplet of the liquid uh, as a result of density fluctuations, and the crystal nucleates in the liquid. Okay. Um, and and uh, so again, uh, 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 Frankel and co-workers have also looked at how uh, nucleation is enhanced uh, in carbon um, uh, as a result of of changes in the local structure. And and basically, the observation is that the nucleation rates increase uh, when the local coordination of the liquid changes from threefold to fourfold, uh, where fourfold is is uh, the coordination number in, in the crystal the, in, in question. Now, in silicon near the liquid liquid critical point, one has both critical fluctuations and a, and a monotonic approach of local coordination to the crystalline value of four. So it's interesting to study the competition between these two. And uh, so in the first instance, we basically just look at the statistics of uh, uh, crystallization events, which are shown here as a function of pressure uh, for a uh, couple of temperatures, there's pro I think there's more. Uh, yeah, so there, there's sort of okay. Uh, basically, uh, going from high to low temperatures, um, and shown along with the crystallization, this is the fraction of runs that crystallize, and this is now the compressibility, and this is the coordination number. As I said the com uh, earlier, the compressibility goes through a maximum, whereas the coordination number, as you decrease the pressure, is monotonically approaching the value of 4. And uh, here is uh, a slightly lower temperature. Again, crystallization rates, uh, uh, compressibility, and the coordination number. Um, um, so two more temperatures. Uh, basically, if you look at all these data, uh, the conclusion is that the crystallization statistics at the highest temperature that we looked at uh, indicate some influence of local structure, but in the rest of the cases, uh, fluctuations as quantified by the compressibility play a larger role in determining crystal nucleation rates. Okay? And we would like to um, uh, sort of... Uh, go beyond this and, and calculate the crystal nucleation rates from estimating free energy barriers. I was going to go through some of the detail, but Richard already did this, so I'm, I'm going to skip uh, uh, the, the details, but basically we do umbrella sampling. Uh, we use an order parameter that's very similar to what he mentioned, uh, except um, the order parameter that we use is in, in, in this uh, sphere, um, is, 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 is a Q3, uh, which corresponds to tetrahedral order rather than Q6, which he, he mentioned. Um, okay. Now, 
so uh, one set of results looking at um, the, the highest temperature that we have studied. Here is basically uh, the, the free energy barriers uh, uh, for, for a range of temperatures that we evaluate. Here is um, <clears throat> what's happening to the compressibility. So the case we're looking at is this 1259. And, and so we have so the, the set of data that are shown here are, are decreasing pressure uh, on, on, the, on, on this right branch of the compressibility. So we're looking at the free energy barrier as it develops as we go towards the compressibility maximum. And the observation, obviously, here is that the free energy barrier is decreasing as one approaches the, um, uh, the compressibility maximum. That's shown here. This is the free energy barrier decreasing as pressure decreases, compressibility, which is increasing. Okay? Uh, so the, this is one part of the story. But we would really like to go beyond the compressibility maximum uh, to the other side and look at how when the coordination number and compressibility are moving in opposite directions, because the, the coordination number continues to move towards the crystalline value, whereas the compressibility now begins to decrease. And we would like to look at how that af uh, affects the crystal nucleation rates. Um, but doing this, again, is, is computationally quite challenging. Among other things, as you can already see here, <coughs> our critical uh, nuclear size is becoming fairly small. Okay? And, and in, in, in the simulations that, that uh, we, we did up to now, uh, we construct this free energy curve by looking at the histograms or the probability distribution of the maximum cluster size. Now, when, when, when the cluster sizes that you're looking at are sufficiently large, this maximum cluster size um, is as good as looking at the cluster size distribution. Uh, but when it begins to be small, uh, you have to worry a little bit uh, about uh, what you're doing because the uh, distribution of maximum cluster size is not the, not the same as the cluster size distribution, uh, which, um, which I illustrate here. Uh, this is now uh, the free energy uh, profile that one gets if we, one sort of pretends that this is the cluster size distribution. What you find, as Biman showed in his talk, but perhaps more dramatically here, is that the, this, this so-called free energy uh, function uh, goes opposite to the direction in which you expect, whereas if you uh, either from uh, an unconstrained or normal MD simulation or from umbrella sampling, if you look at the free energy uh, profile, as a function of the cluster size, by constructing the cluster size distribution properly, you find the normal behavior. Uh, the MD run looks funny simply because, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, you, you, you just allow the system to crystallize, so don't take, we don't have to take these seriously. Uh, but the behavior at small uh, cluster sizes is what, what I would like you to uh, look at. Anyway, that's where we are. Uh, we basically have uh, what we think is a very uh, uh, sort of ideal system <clears throat> to look at some uh, interesting aspects of crystal nucleation, namely the influence of uh, critical fluctuations and local coordination on crystal nucleation rates. Uh, there's a lot more because I think we also uh, have, in one limit, an approach to the kinetic spinodal <coughs> Not exactly in the way that Biman talked about, but uh, as, as a point beyond which uh, uh, structural relaxation times become smaller than crystal nucleation rates. Uh, but it's, it's also a hard system to work with, so our progress has been slow. Uh, but we do have some preliminary results that do uh, sort of con that are consistent with what has been observed previously, namely that crystal, uh, critical fluctuations do contribute in reducing, um, in, in, in reducing uh, nucleation barriers. Uh, we, we are now working on looking at the other side of the compressibility maximum, where, crystal, where critical fluctuations diminish, but, but local structure becomes 
uh, closer to that of the crystal. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So, what was the, I didn't uh, understand, what was the problem about going beyond the compressibility maximum? No, no, it's just the, 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 the relaxation times basically um, skyrocket. So, just doing, doing simulations is very hard. You have to do parallel tempering as Richard described. Um, yeah, so can't just, you avoid the maximum and come? Right. No, no, no. It's, it's just, you know, computationally it's, it's much harder when you go on the other side. So, we just haven't got good enough uh, results yet to talk about. Uh, but, yeah. But, but also, as I mentioned, what does happen when you go there is that the critical nucleus is now becoming small enough that you have to worry about the distinction between the, the statistics that you most easily collect in, in, in one of these simulations, which is the uh, probability of the maximum cluster size as opposed to the cluster size distribution. Um, may I? Yeah, of course. Uh, since so, this um, other uh, liquid uh, <laughs> is, it, it says that um, it's more like a crystal-like structure, Yes. So, can it be characterized as something like a liquid crystal, particularly since directivity will now come? Can it be characterized in that sense or not? No, it's it's a liquid with local structure that is close to. Uh, I mean, wh why? No, it's, there is no director in this. No, this is. No, there is no director in these systems. So, in that sense, uh, it's not like a liquid crystal. Uh, but if you look at, if you sit at one atom and look at the local geometry, uh, then you have a tetrahedral local geometry that's very similar to what you find in a, in a, in a crystal. And this even propagates to some extent. It's not long-range order. Therefore, it's not a crystal. But you have short-range order that is like uh, what you find in the crystal. But then it should not be a fast order transition. It's also criticality. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but you do have a first order transition, but the first order transition line ends in a critical point. Yes. Yeah. So that is critical. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Shri. Question. Right. Okay. So you are talking about silicon. Yeah. And um, it's a one component system. Yeah. And then you have uh, invoked liquid liquid coexistence. Right. So then we have this uh, Gibbs phase rule uh, relating the number of components and the number of phases. Yeah. Right. So, what is the uh, origin of the another order parameter in your thinking? How do you justify this violation of this right. you Gibbs, violate Gibbs phase rule? Right. Because you are, right, um, you, are, you have liquid liquid, it's an one component system. Yeah. Right? No, uh, no, no, but you don't violate Gibbs phase rule. Because no? you, you said that you have uh, additional uh, first order transition line between two phases right. in addition to the usual liquid gas. Yeah. No, right. but, but this additional transition happens on a, on a metastable sheet that doesn't see the crystal, liquid crystal phase boundary, right? So for all... But there are no liquid crystals here. This is silicon, No, no, right? no. I said the liquid crystal oh, phase okay. boundary. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Crystal liquid the Crystal phase liquid, boundary. right. Yeah. <laughs> High so, density, low density. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No, no, but... Um, no, but if, 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 if I have a liquid gas transition in a single component system, I have a transition between two right. phases, That's right? no problem. So... Um, so the liquid-liquid transition is of the same character, right? Uh, so I don't see... Yeah, because the, the symmetry, right, the, the symmetry is the same between these two... These two liquid... Well, yeah, yeah. Two high density, low density liquid phases which are coexisting. The symmetry is the same. Right. So that leads to uh, a variation in the apparent uh, Gibbs rule as practiced here. We can talk more because this okay. is one of the things that yeah, there is. No, I'm, yeah, I'm not seeing the point, but we should talk more. But uh, no, to, to what is surprising about this transition is that one is sort of inclined to think that when one you have condensation, there's one a fluid, one liquid phase that you get. So whereas here you have condensation without long range order, but at the same time two different amorphous orders that are possible. So that means there is an additional order parameter. Okay, so I mean, one can one can define all the parameters which will distinguish the two phases. So, uh, in fact, um, 
I, I, this is one of the slides I, I skipped over. Um, uh, well, so you can you can look at sort of a tetrahedrality order parameter. Uh, one can also, in fact, this Q3 that I mentioned uh, can be used. I mean, Q3 is a local, well, it's an orientational order parameter, and you can use that. You can look at you can, but but the the global Q3 will be zero in the liquid. Uh, but you can look at the, the the spatial correlation function that corresponds to this order parameter. Um, so, one, but, but I, I think, yeah, I mean, in a... See, what I could justify is uh, in water, it's different. I can understand that this could be a significant order parameter. Silicon being... Monoatomic. Mo yeah. Well, That's no, no. So if if you un, if you if you have no problem with the case of water, I don't see this as being very different because if if you look at the, I mean, if you look at the sort of electronic structure, uh, this silicon is as uh, anisotropic as water is, right? And 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 that is yeah. One has to be thinking about that and and yeah. But uh, we can talk more, I guess. Question: Because you um, stretch silicon, and it was to know if you can observe uh, cavitation events. Ah. Okay. Oh, you, well. Um, one more thing I skip. Um, so it's nice when you get questions of for everything that you skip uh, because you don't have time. Okay. So um, in this phase diagram. Um, I hope the question was not planted, but uh, uh, this is uh, the spinodal liquid gas spinodal line that that uh, uh, one uh, one calculates. But we we also looked at what happens if one takes the liquid up here and stretches it down. Okay, and these are uh, the the gray the the brown points and the purple points here are basically tensile limits, which which arise as a result of cavitation, right? But we, yeah, I mean, that's the extent to which we've looked at it so far. So, uh, not more to say. But did you have a specific question? Is it, a, is it real cavitation or it could be a, a fracture maybe because... Uh -huh. um, you, you maybe, and we are very interested to find out because the, the behavior of the liquid is changing when you cross sort of that point. And in fact, the, spin the, 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 the tensile uh, limit curve changes character or changes something you know it, it's not contiguous it's not continuous this way but but it's suddenly becoming much larger uh, we do think that there is uh, some change of character uh, we don't know enough about how to think of fracture in this context but we are working on it and interesting questions Thank you. Uh, Yes. the nature of the uh, fluctuations around a critical point. So in the liquid gas, yeah. um, the structures are, are essentially the same, and, and all that's changing is the density and seeing density fluctuations. Mm -hmm. But in a liquid-liquid critical point, right. you've got these density fluctuations. Are they also coupled to structural changes? So the low-density regions are... Yes. They are? Yeah, so, so uh, no, they're, they're definitely coupled. It's not just density. In fact, density in some sense is a poor... Uh, order parameter to use because the densities of the two phases as compared to the liquid gas are, are very close, right? Uh, so the density jump is small in the liquid-liquid transition. But uh, if you look at uh, some order parameter that, uh, that is associated with orientational order, um, you will have fluctuations with respect to that order parameter. I mean, we have done it to a limited degree, but we haven't probably done it to our satisfaction. Yeah. Let's thank the speaker. <clears throat>